No, I'm about to go in. Tell me that I couldn't do it, but I gotta bring it back. So they're really not with it. Let's go. Tell me where you're from, where you stay. Now I keep it lit from the coast to the bay. Peace on the right. If you guys are sick of wasting money on packs, go check out my sponsor. They offer the cheapest and most reliable way to buy coins straight from the source. Use code MAZE at checkout for 15% off your entire order. <laughs> oh my god. Hey there. Good. Hey there, gorgeous. What brings you to these parts? Was it the thumbnail? Was it? Did you did you click on the thumbnail to say does is this guy actually that ugly? Well, I'm not. As you can tell. Welcome back to Madden Academy episode two. If you are new to this series, I essentially hop in a game, take you through my thought process, my scheme, the decisions I'm making. There are less cuts, less edits, more education on how to become a good Madden player. And boys. Class is in session. If you guys watched episode one of Madden Academy, I was in the Washington football team offensive playbook and multiple defense defensive playbook. Today, we have switched playbooks, and unlike last game where I was on a 28-game win streak, I actually haven't even hopped into a game with my new plays. Now, I ran these playbooks a little bit in past years, so I know some of these formations, and we're kind of going to freestyle it, and I'm going to tell you guys what I'm looking for when... Forming this new offense and basically how to make it good because I already know a few things about these formations I want to run and I'm going to go into more details in a little bit but before we get into the content as always we're going to go over the best and the worst comment of the day. The best comment of the day coming from Langarak. Langarak. He said if Maz was a girl he'd be hot as fuck low key. First of all high key. Yeah I am and the second of all you haven't even seen my fucking ass dude. I would fuck my own ass. And the worst comment of the day coming from Evan, who said, May's been grinding on YouTube almost as much as I grind on my dog. Evan, you are one sick son of a bitch. All right? And I'm not saying that in a funny, joking way. The most important thing when I'm going over my lineup right now is I'm going to be telling you guys how to get wide receivers at the tight end spot. Because I didn't say it in my last video because I was kind of trying to keep it on the down low. But I feel like that was the most commented thing I got. And you know what? I figured... A lot of people know how to do this. I'd rather my subs be in the know. You guys can run whatever offense you want. And it opens a lot of things in your playbook when you can do this. So I'm going to go over it right now. And I'm sure a lot of you are going to be very happy about this. So obviously in your lineup, you need to have one tight end. I have Tony Gonzalez. I feel like he's the best tight end right now. Either him or, or Jermichael Finley, one of the two. I actually still have Jermichael Finley because I'm debating running two tight ends rather than just one. But you need to have one tight end in your lineup. So that's a given. You got one tight end. You're going to notice to get wide receivers at tight end, obviously the first thing, don't have any backup tight ends. You need one tight end in your lineup, no backups. The second thing is if you've ever played when you didn't have enough tight ends, they tend to sub in your O-line. So the first thing they're going to do is sub in a tackle. So you got to make sure you have no backup linemen, all right? No backup linemen in your lineup either. Now, if you don't have any tight ends to sub in, you don't have any linemen to sub in, what do they do next? If you've played enough, you'd know they sub in your middle linebackers, all right? So you got to have no middle linebackers in your lineup. So I got Bobby Bell and Cole Holcomb here at my middle linebacker spots, but they really are left outside linebackers. So they're never going to get subbed in at the tight end position. So that's a big one that a lot of people don't really want to do is they, they don't like taking, they don't like doing all these things in their lineup. So this is one of the main reasons I'm switching away from jumbo. So again, no backup tight ends, no backup O-line, no middle linebackers, no fullback. Okay, so you're going to see Cam Akers is my backup halfback and I have him at fullback because it's going to sub in a fullback. I, it's actually probably going to sub in a fullback before it subs in a lineman. So just make sure you don't have a fullback in your lineup either. If you do all that, then it is going to go by the three or not always going to be three. It's going to go by the highest overall on your offense that isn't already on the field. So if you are running two wide receivers, two tight ends, then it's going to try to fill that last spot with the highest overall backup. In this case, it would be Tyree Kill for me. So he would sub substitute in for the tight end. And you're actually going to see in this video, Tyree Kill is going to be at my tight end position. Now, it's really important that your backup halfback is not a higher overall than the person you want to replace the tight end. For example, if I had Eddie George as my backup halfback, he's an 89 overall. 
All right, that's higher than Tyreek Hill. So if I had Eddie George, they would sub him in, him in at tight end over Tyreek Hill. So that's a really important distinction to make. So to go over it one more time, because I know it can be confusing for people, no backup tight ends, no backup linemen, no fullback, no middle linebackers, and your next highest overall has to be a wide receiver. And that should solidify it. If you guys are confused, just rewatch the video, what I just said, and hopefully this helps you guys out. I know a lot of people are doing it online, and a lot of my subs have been asking me how to do it. So I figure, what kind of purse would I be if I didn't tell you and I kept it a secret? So there you guys go. Hopefully it helps you guys out. Looking at my actual offense, so we got Dagger Dick Dan leading at quarterback. We got Brandon Cooks. This card goes for like two and a half million coins right now. This price has just gone up. I bought him at like 1.5 million, and he's just gone up since then. So I'm actually pretty happy about that because I'm probably going to end up selling him in the next couple weeks. And I'll actually make a profit on it. So that's pretty dope. I'll get to use Brandon Cooks, and I'll get to make a profit. Uh, and like I said, Tyreek Hill is going to be at my tight end position. My second tight end position, and Mark Clayton obviously is a beast, and Barry Sanders. On the defensive side of the ball, actually, let me go over my abilities on offense. We got a high route master, set feet lead on Dagger Dick Dan. On Barry Sanders, we got spin cycle, reach for it, and balance beam. And then on my outside tackles, I got edge protector. Those are all my offensive abilities. I'm thinking about switching them. Like I said, I haven't played too many games in this offense, so once I get more comfortable in it, I might figure out what abilities I like more. Moving on to the defense. I'm switching my defense around as well. I'm going to be running the 4-6 playbook. Now, 4-6 is very interesting because that is 4-6 normal, and you can run the speed package, which is 4-6 with six DBs on the field. So that's a really, really, really glitchy, really powerful formation that I've... That's, it's been good every year, so it's going to be good again this year. And I've actually... I'm hoping it lives up to all the hype. And then when you run that, everybody is going to sub in at a specific spot. So... Your middle linebacker is going to become your cornerback four, which is kind of weird. So that's why I have Isaiah Simmons back there. Then your two outside corners are going to be fine, free safety in the middle. And then your strong safety and cornerback three become your flats. All right? So that's that's what we're dealing with right now. And uh, as for my abilities on defense, we got Adelius Thomas and Elvis Dumerville with edge threat. We got Tyran Matthew and Adrian, no, Isaiah Simmons with acrobat. And then inside stuff. On Justin Smith and then as for chemistries I don't have any physical chems yet I am going to get them before weekend league tomorrow by the way if you enjoy this type of video and you want to see me live I'm gonna be uploading this Thursday Thursday night so tonight if you're seeing this Thursday tonight I will be live on Twitch playing weekend league having fun and hanging out with you guys so I got play fake to boost my medium route running for Tony Gonzalez and Brandon Cooks. So that's why I have play fake exclusively. And lockdown is probably the best defensive chemistry. And like I said, I'm going to be getting the sprinter chem to boost my speed and all that. As we move on to my playbooks, I told you guys I was switching. I'm going to be running the Patriots offense and the base 4-6 defense. This is an alternate defense you can find in the store. If you guys are trying to follow along, I believe I'm going to be sticking in these playbooks for a while at least Patriots I'm gonna try out the 4-6 see how it works but today we're gonna be hopping into a game again I'm gonna be kind of telling you guys what I'm looking for in this offense what I'm trying to make work and how you guys can follow along and make it work for yourself I will say the offense I'm about to run is probably one of the most simple yet efficient offenses in the game it's gonna be gun slot ace offset I believe it's called it's uh, one of the most popular formations too and I think you guys are probably gonna really really like it got some of the best shotgun running in the game as well as some very very overpowered pass plays but i told you guys class is in session everybody get in your seats take out your notepads and let's get ready to freaking rumble baby bondi is toxic let's see how toxic you are bondi there's your top three lamar jackson ed mccaffrey miles garrett and those are mine baby and did i mention i'm in playoffs i'm in playoffs so this is my wild card game going against my man bondi and apparently he's toxic so so I'm going to be starting with the ball on offense. I told you guys in my last video, I'm not very thrilled about that. I usually like to start on defense. But the formation I'm running is gun ace slot offset. As you guys can see, we got number 10 at the other tight end position. That is Brandon Cooks. And I'm going to set my audibles. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I do not know exactly what I want as my audibles. I'm going to think 0-1 trap inside zone. I want the RPO in there. Where's the RPO? PA bubble. That's the RPO right there. Level sale and PA post shot. That looks like a good... Actually, no, I'm going to take off. Nah, I'm going to... I don't know. Wait, let me think about this for a second. So, first of all, this guy accepted the penalty while I'm setting my audibles. What a loser. I'm going to take off PA post shot, and I'm going to put on posts. 
No, I'm, I, I lied. I'm going to put back on PA post shot. I, see, this is, I'm indecisive, but we're going to come out in 01 trap because, guys, this is probably the best run in the game. It's very difficult to stop, and it's going to make them get in a run defense as opposed to like a big dime or a dollar or they're going to get out of their their little fancy little little 7 DBs on the field type shit real fast. You see this guy's in a dollar, right? So he's got the sick the DBs off the edge. He's going to blitz me or something like that. But nope because I'm going to run this trap right here and we're going to get a big gain. See, this is what I'm talking about. Ooh, little juke inside juke. Oh yeah, user juke. That's why you get out of your stupid little defense, Bondi. How toxic do you really think you are? Are you toxic or are you just a freaking idiot? Huh? Don't run that shit on my field. Now onto the defensive side of the ball. Like I said, I'm in this 4-6, so I go over to 4-6 normal. My package, I want speed. So now you see in the speed package, we got DB subbed in there. I don't actually know if I'm going to have everybody in the right spot, but I'm going to take a look once we get in there. It looks like, yeah, who we don't have a Dailies Thomas in at all, um, and I want to get my user on Justin Simmons. Other than that, it looks like we have most... Ooh, Throw the sack. We got a nice block shot there. But other than that, it looked like all our DBs were in the right spot. I just need to make sure I get a Dalius Thomas in there on the edge. Oh, wait. Why can't I sub him in right here? All right. So this is going to be an issue right here. We don't have our outside linebackers rushing. All right. So we got him in a third down here. I'm going to put Bell in a spy. I'm going to use her in the middle. I haven't adjusted my zone drops to the point I want them. I've just been trying to kind of feel out this formation before I get too fancy with it. Uh, this guy, frankly, because he accepted his thing, I don't think is very good. And that's actually a really nice throw right there on the sideline. In a cover three, I don't know how he actually fit that in there. That's actually a pretty nice dot. I might have to take that one and put it in my pocket. But I guess I'm going to have to stick with this. I already used my, uh, I already used my one pause for the half. Which is a bummer because you only get one pause. So now I can't really set my depth chart the way I want it because I didn't do it in time. So we're just stuck with our D-line being the way it is. So I guess I just wasted my... Uh, oh, we dropped the pass right there. I wasted my pause on something and I wasted my edge threats. They're not even going to be on the field. So we're just going to have to deal with it and it'll be okay. Moving on to second and ten. I kind of want to watch that little wheel route now uh, because that actually... I'm going to actually man up. All right, he didn't run the wheel again. He's going for like a cover three beater or something. We get the interception there. Perfect time. User pick. Uh, that was just a bad throw really by uh, him. That was a really bad read. I think he tried to fit in some type of laser there, but it just it didn't work at all. All right, and Bondi is toxic. Is already going to quit out. That was not very difficult, man. This is what usually happens when I try to record these games is they just, they just quit out too fast to make some good content. So I guess, boys, we're on to the next one. Come on, bro. What the fuck? Shit freezes every fucking... It's my third time I've had a close app in this video, guys. This this game is broken. It's broken. It's not working. So what I realized in the last game is that in order to get my outside linebackers rushing off the end, I need to make sure they're not starting at outside linebacker. And then I'm just going to go in my depth chart at the beginning of the game, sub them in to my right end and left end, and that should get them on the field and getting in play. So that is a, cha that is a change I just learned live. That I'm now changing my lineup to. I, I only have golds right now, but I'll figure it out what I'm going to do with that later. But that is how I'm going to get them to actually be on the field. AFZ Notorious. Merlin Olsen on the D-line. I'm going to be honest. Merlin Olsen, every time I've played him, has like just wreaked havoc. So I'm not looking forward to this one. So like I said, guys, I'm going to go into my lineup, into my depth chart. I got to make sure my playmakers are on the field. I wasted six ability points on my edge threat. So I got to make sure they're actually rushing. So we're going to take out Porcher. We're going to put in... Thomas, and then we're going to take out Justin Smith, put in Doomerville, and then at D-Tackle, instead of Kyle Williams, I'm going to have Justin Smith. So those two are going to be in the interior, outside linebackers on the outside, and I'm going to have six DBs behind them and one linebacker. So, so I think the lineup should be good now the way I want it. Again, these things can be very particular, so it's important that before you hop into a game, you really understand how to get your players where you want them. So once again, 4-6 normal, speed package. It looks like we got all the boys on the field. 4-6 normal. I'm just going to go this cover three look. He's in single back. And the thing I love about this defense is you're going to be able to run it against anything. Any under center, and really anything. So uh, this guy might be trying to pass from under center, or he might be trying to run. First play of the game was a run to Jerome Bettis. He got a gain of zero. So you guys are going to see the reason I really like this defense is because it is good against the run. That's something I felt like I was struggling against was the run. So uh, this single back tight off is actually pretty good uh, for passing and for running. So it's going to be interesting to see what this guy does. 
Nice little check down there to Hill. Going to fall forward, of course. As always in this game, everybody loves to fall forward. We talk with him at like for like a five, six yard gain, and he ends up falling forward for an eleven yard gain. So that is not very, not very fun right there. Uh, but he does have Dan Marino, so that is going to mean we do not have to spy the quarterback. All right, that should have been a tackle for a loss, but somehow he slipped through there. And uh, you're going to see the run defense, though, is holding up pretty strong. I'm not too scared about any run plays he has planned. Now, the next thing I want to do that I forgot to do is change my zone depth. So, again, like I said, I'm going to start at, like, 15 for curl flats, 5 for hooks, and then maybe 5 for flats, and then make him beat me deeper. I usually don't like to start with my zones very deep uh, until he can show me that he's going to actually be able to push me deep down the field like that. Pause. But second and seven, uh, if he is going to continue to run the ball, he's got three O line abilities, which makes me think he wants to run the ball. But I do know uh, that looks like a play action right here. Post over the middle. I'm not there. Got some pretty good defense, but once again, he's checking down here. And if he's going to check down all game, then he is going to do a pretty good job because this defense I'm going to be running is very, very bend, don't break. All right? It's bend, don't break. I don't. The reason I'm switching defenses is because I'm sick of giving up big plays. I do not like giving up big plays, and I felt like I was giving up way too many of them. And you guys probably noticed that in my Weekend League recap. I gave up like four touchdowns on streaks to Tyree Kill in one game. And I don't I don't want to go through that pain again. Alright, so this time we're actually going to play hard flats. And I, dude, what is my user doing? I felt like I felt like I just I tried to turn and I feel like I ran like a 40-yard circle. What was going on there? So the first drive, I usually feel like I'm just trying to feel my opponent out so far. It's going to be running the ball and throwing hitches. That's what it looks like he wants to do. So I'm going to keep my user down low. And once again, see, he's throwing to the flat again. I didn't run hard flats that time. Jerome Bettis, see, this is why this game is good in my opinion. It's because he can throw it to the flat and get seven yards. And like in Madden's past, you, we weren't always able to do that. So this time I'm going to press and I'm going to play hard flats. He hasn't pushed above my flat one time so we're gonna see if we can make him do that on his next pass attempt here because again a lot of players can check down not very many players can check up is that the word yeah see we got we got it kind of covered there good dot by him he playmakers his little hitch up and he's five for five for 66 yards already this guy's actually showing me that he can dot I'm expecting fully expecting a run on this play he has Passed a couple times in a row, so I'm going to be fully expecting him to run here. Clock is ticking down as well. He's going to run this little jet sweep again. And yes, we are there with our user to make it play. That's a good example of learning your opponent's tendencies because he already ran that jet sweep. And I, I could tell that's what he wanted to go to again. And when he motioned, you know, I just flew over the top and we got there. So great play by us. Uh, it's going to bring up a second goal from the eight. So this time he is in a different formation. It's wing tight U. I'm going to spread my linebackers and spread my line and user... Bobby Bell here because I feel like he's going to be the liability and coverage. He is going back to the run and we are filling the gaps there. This 4-6 normal again, very good against the run. Three rushes for three yards and then he has two other rushes with his wide receiver for like two more yards. So overall, run game has been going great. We're going to go back to this cover two. Invert look. He is now back. And I'm going to be shading underneath coverage. I do not want to give up anything underneath at the goal line because he's going to want to run like a hitch or something like that. See, we got, he's got the hitches. He's going to try to run. Dan Marino gets tackled forward. It should have been a sack, but he ends up getting two yards. But it brings up fourth down. I assume he's going to take his three. And there we go. Field goal. So even though we kind of didn't have the greatest drive on defense, we were kind of feeling out his offense, he didn't show me anything impressive. He threw like four or five hitches. He ran the ball a bunch. And we ended up holding him to three. So for a first drive, I feel okay about that. I feel like I understand what he wants to do. And if he only got three points on his first drive, I don't think he's going to get very much after that. So a uh, pretty solid start to the game, in my opinion. I'll, I'll take that every time. So once again, uh, I'm going to start off with this 0-1 trap again because it looks like he's in a three-down lineman set. If this doesn't work well against the run, I'm just going to stick with it until he gets out of it. And once again, we're getting like, if I can get eight yards, six to eight yards every single time, we're going to continue to take that. Another really good play out of this formation is this level sale. The corner route from Gonzalez is, is fire. And then... We got two backside ends here, and if he doesn't cover the flats, obviously I'm just going to throw it. Oh, see, I wanted to run there, but I forgot I had Dan. I actually had triangle wide open for a touchdown. Saw that as I was getting sacked. We're actually going to go right back to that look. See if it's there again. If it is, that should have been a touchdown. I, I should have seen that. I didn't even look at my streak. That That is a good example. I was looking at my checkdowns, and then I went, to, I went to run right away, even though I have Dan Marino. I think I'm still in the Lamar mentality. But if he's in a cover two again, he's not. And we get sacked this time. That's a bummer. Now it's going to bring up a, th a fourth down. I probably should. Okay. 
forth, we have a decision to make here. Now, if I was playing just like, you know, balls of the walls, I probably would go for this. But because A, I don't really know this offense super well yet. And B, this guy's offense looks not the greatest. Uh, I'm going to be okay with punting the ball here. I think this is a smarter decision. And if this is like an educational video and you guys are trying to like learn some, you know, you know, ball management, clock management, stuff like that. I think punting there is a good move. So he's back in this single back tight Y off. And I'm going to be running cloud flats on the field. I should press here. I'm expecting him to pass. He's under two minutes. I don't think he can afford to really just continue to run the ball. And you know what I just noticed is my, my, my ends that I subbed in are not on the field again. They're not on the field again, and I don't know why. I want my edge strats on the field. I got to figure that out. Wait, they are on the field. That's Doomerville and Thomas, but they don't have abilities on them. I don't know why. Why don't they have abilities on them? My, my Okay, I have edge strats at left end. They don't have abilities on them, so maybe their abilities get taken off if I move them to a different position, but that's kind of a bummer. Good dot by him. That time he did beat me over the top, so now I might need to think about playing a more hybrid look with Cloud Flats and... Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play curl flat on that side and a hard flat, and then a hard flat on the left. And I'm gonna use her the middle to right side. I'm actually gonna get on. I'm gonna do this. Oh, he's running this ball. Okay. Good, good play by him. I, I, I was thinking too much on the pass. I'm gonna call timeout here. Here's a good example of clock management. He is now inside the 10 yard line. Only a minute left in the first half. Most people think, oh, why would you call a timeout? If, uh, you, you know, you're going to call a timeout for him, there's only a minute left. But the thing is, he's not going to run out of time. He has three timeouts. He's inside the 10. He's not going to run out of time. All right? He's not worried about that. I'm calling a timeout so I can get the ball back. And I know he's going to run the ball here. I'm actually going to run commit. I'm going to run commit. See how he's on his left tackle right there? Somehow run committing did not get me a stop there. So he was on his left tackle. You can only do that on a run play. So I, I knew that was a, a run play, but somehow he still scored. We got a minute left. We got to score points here, at least three. So he's staying in some type of dime look. We're going to actually run the ball here, even though we don't have too much time on the clock. And I'm going to be quick to call a timeout there. But I, I want him to get out of this dime. And I, what I really need is three points here. So if I can get three points uh, just by running the ball, I'll actually do that because that's no risk to me. And uh, he might actually get out of the formation if we do that. So once again, he's in this dime look. He is bringing an extra defender over, which isn't good. But with how good this run is... You see, we're actually going to get another 10 yards right there. Call a second timeout. We still got 54 seconds on the clock. So, I mean, once again, he is in this dime. And if he's going to stay in the dime, I'm going to stay in the trap, baby. I'm going to stay in the trap if you're going to stay in the dime. This time, we don't have any more timeouts. So, I am going to come up, hurry up to the line. We did lose four seconds, which actually isn't that much. But I'm going to go right back to the trap. And again, if he's not going to get out of the dime, I'm not going to get out of the trap. Spike ball here. Going to come up and spike this ball to stop the clock. And we're at the 36-yard line. We need three more yards, roughly, for a field goal. So, like I said, if I could just get a field goal by running the ball, I'm just going to do that. So, we're going to come out in a pass play this time. And, again, if he's in the dime, we're going to audible to a run. It's just going to take what he's giving me. If he wants to give me three points, I will take three points, honestly. If he wants to give me if he wants to give me seven, I'll take seven. We'll find out what we can get here. So, there we go. There's our field goal. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to spike the ball at... I'm going to spike the ball at four seconds. I got my three points, only down seven now. I get ball a half, and that's just playing a little bit of clock management. I don't know this offense well enough to shoot him deep. So we're going to spike the ball, take our three. And I fucking missed the field goal. Dude, the, the kick meter just freaking lags. If you guys didn't know, there is an issue with the kick meter that lags when you kick field goals. Uh, a, a fix to that is you can wait like four seconds before you kick. But I just didn't wait. And EA has addressed. They said they're going to fix the kick meter in a future title update. But until that update comes, you're going to have to deal with kick meter lag. So when you're kicking a field goal, guys, wait three or four seconds before you kick it when you come out of the huddle. I did not do that. That was on me. But that's what caused me to miss the freaking field goal. I cannot believe I just did that. So once again, he's not, he's literally not getting out of this dime look. And if he's not, I'm going to, I'm getting 10 yards of carry, bro. I'm getting 10 yards of carry. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to literally hurry up and try to get you out of this dime because you're going to give me a bunch of yards. See that time. Okay. That time he stopped it. Third and five might catch him off guard with a little pass here. Going to take it, take our, take our yards, get the first down, move the chains, 10 yard pass. That was actually our first completion. That kind of sucks. Going back to the same pass. I'm not the type of guy who likes to run the ball too much. 
We got our corner right there to Hill. Once again, Tyree Kill at the tight end position. He's going to be running some nice routes out there for me. Uh, but we're moving the chains pretty easily. And you guys can see, if I have time, uh, it's not going to be an issue. So now we're going to go back to this trap. This guy is still in this dime look. And let's see if he can blow it up. He cannot. And, you know, 10, 15 yards a pop. We got nine rushes, 73 yards, and I haven't even broken a big run. This has been consistent yardage. And again, this guy just needs to get out of dime. I'm going to go back to the pass here. Barry in the flat. Tried to juke, but we did get out of bounds, and that's an example. If he doesn't play hard flats, I can take the flats all day and get eight yards like I just did there. That was very simple, very easy read. And even though I got out of bounds, the clock is still, still chewed down 20 seconds. That's fucking awesome. Love that. Uh, and it looks like he brought down his safety, and we got Tyree Kill. I have an idea. Let's run Cooks on a... St oh. Got it. Had to call time out there. I got the two clock glitch. Even though I got out of bounds, I don't know how that happened. Got the two clock glitch, even though I went out of bounds and had to burn a timeout. Example of bad... That's just bad uh, awareness by me, really. So in here, we're going to run a little bit of a different look here. And I, I didn't hit my read when I should have. I'm just going to throw that one away. Now, the good thing about this is, uh, even though it's third and two, I know he's not going to get out of this dime look, and I know I can take my trap. And I am going to do that. I'm going to take my trap and get in the end zone. 16 yards. Like I said, he needs to get out of this defense, or this run is going to keep gouging him. And, again, it might look... This, this is what's going to be frustrating, is this guy, if I beat him, is going to message me, saying, you're such a pussy. You ran 0-1 trap every fucking play. You're such a pussy. And, I, and like it's like, you know what? Why are you not a pussy for running big dime, whatever the fuck you're running, every play as well? You know an 0-1 trap is a good play call against that light of a set. I'm going to get yards every time. So if you're in that defense every time, I'm in an 0-1 trap every time. It's not a pussy move. You're equally pussified for running that defense every single play. So once again, we're giving a hybrid look. He has been hitting me on the outside edges. And so I am going to run, if you guys look, I got a hard flat and a curl flat on both sides. So that should cover the short and the deep. And then I got a user over the middle. Hopefully he doesn't hit me with any streaks deep because uh, that's where I could see some problems here. He's motioning a guy over. I know he's going to throw it there. And good good little after the after the play by him. I missed my hit stick. Uh, seven for seven. This guy's dotting me alive. So this defense needs some work, I think. So he's only really hit me deep on the left side. So I'm going to run hard flats with a curl flat on the left. Got my deep guy middle, and then I'm going to use her low with Simmons. And uh, if he runs the ball, he, then we got inside stuff. His run game has been non-existent. So that is the good thing. We got run D. That's the main reason I'm running this. And then I'm going to have to figure out a way to get better pass coverage behind it. All right, so once again, we're running that same look. I want to see him try to pass against it and see if he gets anything going. Uh, that hitch last time kind of got me. The hitches are really kind of killing me. It's getting me after the catch, too. So he's motioning his guy over once again. And this hitch is going to be mine. He's going to try to play make. Oh, good dot. See, that? See that's where he's going to get me. This guy's actually got a very, very efficient offense. And it's actually pretty tough to stop. I might have to get into a different look. So because this guy has been dotting me very, very easily, I am now going to be switching... He's going to be running the ball. Nope, no, 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 good. I'm switching the defense I'm running. Uh, run defense still there. I'm going to be pinching my line every time to make sure I am stopping the run, but I'm switching my defense completely because I'm, I am having trouble stopping. So we're going to a man coverage look. I want to see if he can beat man coverage. And if he cannot, then we will be in luck. So there we go. That look is decent for me. It's second and 13. Nothing is really open there. And we go for, there we go. He made him throw it away. See, so that defense, all I do is switch my defense a little bit. That zone coverage wasn't working too well with his little, his little, uh, what are they called? Little curl routes. So this man coverage should be better for that. And I'm not manning up the running back. So I got to keep that in mind. I'm not manning up the running back. I got my 15 yard hook curls and that's going to be open if he throws it. No, he didn't throw it. All right, there we go. Somehow he gets the catch there. I'm going to call my timeout, burn the clock. I have a feeling he's going to kick his three, make me get seven. Oh, he's going for it. All right, he is going for it. He is going for it here, boys. This is uh, pretty much the game. I don't know if he's going to try to run the ball or what, but this is pretty much going to be it. We are now playing hard flats and a hook curl. I'm going to be shading underneath. I do not want to give up anything underneath. Switching my man assignment. He's going to run the ball. We shoot the gap with Isaiah Simmons, and that was a great user play by me. I was ready for the run as well as a pass, 
and it ended up working out really well. So that worked out well. We get the ball now. We need to go down and get three. We got 2.30 left on the clock. And if he stays in his dime, I am going to trap my way all the way down the field. We got enough time. We're going to freaking do it. So actually, now that we got Tyreek Hill here, he is running a cover two every single time. And so I'm going to be running... I'm going to be running this. And if Tyreek Hill's open down the middle, you know I'm throwing that bitch. You know I'm throwing the bitch. Doesn't look like he is. We got Cooks. I'm going to go down because I don't want to take a hit. I don't want to fumble here. Uh, and we're going to go right back to that same look. If I'm going to run the trap this time. Looks like he's running a middle third. So I don't want to waste my energy trying to look for the big play here when he's giving me, you know, as many yards as I want with this trap. So I need to have some good run stick. Actually, he just gave me the look I wanted. He got gave me the bubble. So we're going to throw the bubble here. We get about 10 yards there. Two-minute warning hit. So he moved in his slot guy away from the bubble. And that's what makes this so good is I wanted the trap, but he moved the guy in to give extra run support. And now we got the bubble. So that was beautiful. Um, I don't think he's going to do that again. He's still in this dime look. So guess what? Guess what? Give me eight yards. Give me eight yards, bro. Get out of dime. I'm, I'm running. Hurry up. You're going to stay in dime, bro. Just gonna go right back to it. You got a deep, a deep third in the middle, so that guy's not in the run game. That's another thing. He's in a cover two with a deep third right in the middle from his linebacker. So that linebacker, oh, am I gonna disconnect? Come on, don't let me disconnect. But he had a deep third in the middle, so his linebacker is not gonna be playing in the run game. He's trying to. Okay, he's st still in this defense. He has not gotten out of this defense once. He's making a million freaking audibles. And we get eight again. Six, eight, whatever. I don't care. We still got a timeout. We're in field goal range now. So now, if I get a touchdown, if I get a touchdown, we win. Worst case, I take my field goal. See, look at this. Look at this. Like, what is he doing? Get out of your defense. I'm getting almost 10 yards of carry every time. And I can actually let this clock drip down a little bit. I can let this clock drip down a little bit because I'm inside the 10. I have a field goal. I can let it drip down. And if he's in dime again inside the 10, I swear to God. He is. Literally, what the fuck is this guy doing? I don't fucking know. I literally don't. Oh, he barely got the suction tackle. I'm going to hurry up. See, he calls a timeout now because he wants the ball back. If he stays in this, I don't, I don't even know what to think. This guy is just so stubborn. Guys, we're at the five-yard line. I've proven that I'm just jamming it down his throat, and he is staying in this same defense. All right? I almost want to pass it just to, just to like, I don't know, but let's just fucking do it. Look at that. We're right there. We're at the freaking one yard line and he's still going to be in dime. I bet I, he's still going to be in dime. All right. He's in goal line now. It looks like, and if, if uh, he doesn't cover cooks, I'm just going to throw it to cooks. Nope. He did cover cooks. Oh, when we dropped it on third and goal, that was a nice pass. I thought, but he did drop it. It was man coverage there. Uh, so what we're going to go with here is just kick our field goal going to overtime. I, th I think this guy is not very good. So is this going to be ice kick now? See, I'm going to wait four seconds. One, two, three, four. Now I should not have any kick lag. There we go. Perfect kick. Accurate kick, baby. Up, up is good. 10 to 10. I missed the field goal, so it should be 10 to 13. But you know what? It happens. F uh. All right, so he's running. Oh, nice little play here. If we... if. There we go. We hit, hauled him inbounds. He doesn't have any timeouts. So the fact that we tackled him inbounds is pretty much going to end it for him. Because uh, now he has seven seconds left. And he's going to basically have to get out of bounds this time. I'm going to change my flats to 25. Go back to that same look. And move them out. I do not want to give up the sideline. I'm also going to shade outside. So I got my inverted thirds, a.k.a. deep halves for my cornerbacks. That's to stop any one-play touchdowns. And then I got my curl flats set at 25 yards, shaded outside. If he somehow gets outside of that, uh, that's going to be surprising. But he's got six seconds left, so I'm not expecting him to. Yeah, there, he's throwing a pick there. Should be a pick, at least. And we get the interception with Vincent. And we're going into overtime, boys. Going into overtime. A tale of two halves. He scored 10 in the first half and shut me out. In the second half, I scored 10 and shut him out. And we are starting with the ball. And if, again, I swear to God, if he is in this dime defense still and he's not getting out of it, I'm going to continue to take my 10 yards of carry. It's it like, I hope at this point I get a hate message from this guy after the game. That There'd be nothing more satisfying than that. Than him thinking I'm the asshole for running 0-1 trap 15 times 
when he literally did not change his defensive formation once. Look at that, guys. Surprise, surprise. He is still in whatever the fuck this is. Bringing everybody down to the line of scrimmage. But guess what? I don't care. Because I'm going to be gone. You are so dumb, bro. You are literally so dumb. How many times do I have to tell you to get out of this freaking defense? And that's the game. Because you're too goddamn stubborn. I hope to God this guy messages me. I hope to God this guy messages me. And this is exactly the reason I switched to this offense. It's because simply guys cannot run the big dime 146. They can't run, you know, dollar. They, they can't run many things. They got to stay in a nickel package. They got to stay in something heavier. And uh, I'm very happy with that victory right there. It wasn't pretty. We played very poorly to start. But you guys did see as I felt more comfortable in the defense, felt more comfortable in the offense, we kind of got the chains moving. We got the blood pumping. And uh, we, we made it happen. We got the victory. Well, that's going to do it for the video, you guys. Like I said, if you guys want to see me get more comfortable in this offense, you guys want to see me kind of expand the plays that I have because I don't really know too many plays in this offense. I, those were my first games running both offense and defense. So you guys could probably tell I was a little uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do. But when somebody is going to stay in that formation... I'm going to take my yards all day, especially when it's that freaking easy with Barry Sanders. So uh, if you guys ever on the defensive side of that and someone's just running the ball down your throat every time, maybe get out of big dime or, or dime, whatever the fuck you're in. Maybe think with your head. Don't be so stubborn and think, oh, if I adjust this way, now I'll stop it. Oh, wait, if I adjust this way, now I'll stop it. Guess what? If you haven't labbed it, you're probably not going to want to lab it on the fly. So if somebody's running down your throat, maybe just switch it up. Get into nickel 335. Get into no nickel normal. There's plenty of other ways you can stop the run from shotgun that's not out of one of those those formations right there. We got a lot more Madden Academy to come, boys. This is going to be a weekly thing. So at least once a week, we are going to be doing a Madden Academy episode just like this. Additionally, I'm going to be posting all 25 games of my weekend league for this upcoming weekend in the next week. So you're going to get five videos, five games each. It should be a lot of fun. And I'll be streaming them all as well. So stop by twitch.tv slash I'll be seeing you guys very soon.